In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the OSI reference model. Now, the OSI reference model isn't specifically useful for a forensic investigator necessarily, although it's good background information to have or good fundamental information to have because you end up building on what's in the OSI reference model as we're going through, particularly when we start talking about some of the network issues. Understanding the OSI reference model sometimes helps you understand better what's happening with network communications, and it also provides you a bit of a shorthand with talking about specific pieces of the network transmission and different network protocols. Now, there's a couple of different models that you would typically talk about when we're discussing network protocols and network behavior. I'm going to just take a quick look at the TCP IP model, and then we're going to go into the OSI model. And again, that's primarily because the OSI model is really the one that is often used and discussed although the TCP IP model is used sometimes as well. Now, in the TCP IP model, we have the network access layer on the bottom of the stack, and these are called stacks, and you'll often hear people talk about protocol stacks. So these are stacks, and the reason is because the different layers stack on top of each other. So at the very bottom of the TCP IP model, which is on the right-hand side here, we've got the network access layer, Above that is the internet layer, then the transport layer, and finally at the very top, the application layer. In the OSI model, we've got the physical layer, and we've got the data link layer above that. Above that, we've got the network layer, and then transport, session, presentation, and application. And to the right-hand side of the names of the different layers, you'll see examples of those particular layers. So the physical layer, something that would be at the physical layer would be, for example, Ethernet or Token Ring, and those are protocols. Also, a hub or a repeater or a network interface card, for example, that would be considered something at the physical layer. At the data link layer, again, we're talking about Ethernet, a different component of Ethernet. We're also talking about ATM and switches and bridges also exist at the data link layer. In other words, they operate at layer two. At the network layer or layer three, we've got IP, ICMP, and IPX, and a router is something that would operate at layer three. In the transport layer or layer four, we've got TCP, UDP, SPX, and the concept of ports, frankly, is at layer four as well. There are no ports in IP. There are no ports in ICMP. Ports is something you get with TCP and UDP. So, for example, a web server will listen on port 80, and that would be TCP port 80, and that port would be something that would be operating at layer four. Above that, we've got Session, which is Apple Talk and Winsock, for example. The Presentation Layer, which is Layer 6. So we've got image files and video files there. So JPEGs, GIFs, MPEGs. And finally, at the Application Layer, or Layer 7, we've got things like HTTP, FTP, and SMTP. So application protocols are at the Application Layer. Now, there are just a couple of differences between the models. In the TCP IP model, we've got the network access layer, and that's really the same as the physical and data link layer from the OSI model. So I'm going to flip back here, and you can see on the left the data link and the physical layer at the bottom of the OSI model, and that really maps to the network access layer on the TCP IP model. And the application layer from the TCP IP model encompasses the session presentation and application layers from the OSI model. So you can see on the TCP IP model on the right hand side, there's the application layer. Well, that really encompasses all of the functions of the three layers at the top of the OSI model, which are session presentation and application. So, really, the two stacks model the same behavior, they just model it in different ways, or they take 
you know, all of the same behaviors and functions into account. They just break them up in a couple of different ways. So you'll often hear people talk about when they're having network conversations, they may be talking about something that happens at layer two. And a layer two problem is something that would relate to, for example, using a switch. So if you're talking about a switch and you hear somebody talk about layer two, you know, they're talking about the data link layer. Or if they're talking about a router problem and they say, well, you know, that's a layer three thing, you know, they're talking about the network layer. So really, that's why we talk about the OSI model, not only in terms of understanding the different functions and how they interact with one another, but also as kind of a shorthand so that you know kind of which set of functionality we're talking about. You can talk about the different layers in the OSI model. So TCP IP is a four layer model and OSI is seven layers. Mostly when you hear people talk about the different layers in a network stack and they start talking about protocols and how they're broken apart and they refer to different layers, they're really referring to the OSI model. And the way you know that primarily, or for example, would be layer seven is the application layer. And the OSI model is the only model that has the seven layers. So if you start hearing somebody talk about a layer seven thing, then that's definitely the OSI model because the TCP IP model doesn't have seven layers. Ultimately, a lot of the lower levels are the same. So there's not a lot of differences and you don't really hear a lot of people talk about layer five and layer six anyway. So the application layers for most purposes would be discussed in kind of the same way. It's really when you start talking about layer two in the OSI model, which would really map to layer one in the TCP model. And then everything in the TCP model kind of maps down a layer when we're talking about the network layer or the internet layer in the TCP IP model. That would be layer two there, but it's really layer three on the other model in the OSI model. So again, they're really talking about the same sets of functionality. They've just broken them up in different ways. And most of the time when you hear people talking about layers, they're really referring to the OSI model, which again is the reason why I go into this here, because we're going to be talking about networking in subsequent lessons. And if I start referring to different layers, I'm referring to the layers in the OSI model.